Um, my name's Kat, Catherine, Cat for short. So, um, and I've been at Lorraine County Public Health, your county health department, for about 10 years now, um, and have had the opportunity to do a lot of work on really like the physical environment and policy and programming that can support living full, healthy, long lives for our residents here in Lorraine County. So today we're going to be talking about safety um, and how important roadway safety is for all of us. Um, so uh, if you're not familiar, Lorraine County Public Health, uh, as I said, we're a county health department. Um, some of you may be familiar with that and that thinking like food inspections, like at restaurants or um, playground inspections at schools or, for example, um, nursing services. And so, yes, it's all that, but we also do quite a bit with community partners and um, work closely with different officials or nonprofit groups, um, community resident groups to kind of hear needs and then help to seek funding or do programming to address some of those needs to ultimately leave, lead to better health outcomes. A lot of the work that I do on my team is a lot about injury prevention and chronic disease prevention. Um, so yes, we do all those things that you probably think of right off the bat with the county health department, but hopefully you'll learn some things that we do that you haven't heard of today. Um, and why is public health a leader at the table um, for safety or injury prevention? You might be used to hear, thinking about like police officers or EMS and fire talking about roadway fatalities and sa road safety. Well, public health is also at the table because we really focus on these social determinants and factors of health. So in our everyday communities, in our everyday living conditions, there are things that make it easy to be healthy and then there are things that make it harder or produce barriers to health. Um, and so we kind of come back to these social determinants of health, these social and physical factors um, that either can support a healthy lifestyle or hinder. So when thinking about um, roadway safety, um, you know, this is obviously, yeah, it's, there's reactions, it's, ooh, that's, it just seems awful to, you know, to uh, see that image. Um, and it's often, it's too common, you know, um, crashes on roadways uh, and this is a federal national issue, um, not just in Lorain County. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about a couple of national statistics, and then I'll get into even some local and some Avon Lake. Um, I have some Avon Lake information as well. Um, so unfortunately, the current reality is, as I said, um, this is a problem. Traffic fatalities on roadways um, is a public health crisis affecting all of us. Each year, over a million lives are lost globally in traffic crashes, um, so even outside of the US. Um, and really, what we say is that one is too many. Um, yes, we're never going to be able to stop crashes from occurring, but we can try to make sure that those that occur are not going to result in a serious injury or a fatality. And there's a lot of different ways we can do that. Um, I think it's, it might be up here. Um, you know, again, this is kind of the grim reality, but um, just another stat for you. In 2022, nearly 43,000 people died in the U.S. in traffic crashes, and that is about equivalent to a mid-sized airplane crashing every single day in 2022. So, you know, you don't think about this, but again, it does not have to be inevitable. It's very much preventable. Um, moving forward, hopefully to some, um, well, it's not necessarily better news, but just kind of paying the picture as to why this is important. Um, even when we look at tra traffic fatalities in general, you don't necessarily see the same like across the board. We often see that pedestrians and bicyclists are also among those that are um, you know, great, greatest impacted. Um, and then you can also kind of see, even breaking down by minority groups, um, we do unfortunately see a higher, um, you know, uh, what's, is it a rate? Higher uh, number of people, I guess, overrepresented um, if you're black or African American or um, American or, I'm sorry, American Indian, Alaska Native or Hispanic, um, much higher rates than some of the other racial and um, ethnic breakdowns. Um, low income is also a factor. You know, every community has low income folks, high income folks. It, it spans. I know sometimes, you know, in Lorain County, there can be kind of conversation about, oh, well, you know, some communities are better off or, or not so good, off, not so well off. Um, but independent of that, you know, every community has lower income individuals that need help and support. And unfortunately, we are seeing that, um, you know, in those neighborhoods or areas that people walking and, and biking are killed uh, more often. 
And it makes sense a bit, you know, maybe potentially sharing vehicles or needing to walk more in some, you know, areas. But um, again, we want to prioritize equity, um, meaning that the roads are safe for everyone. And, the, and across the board, we're having safe conditions for all road users. All right, so one strategy, you know, here's some, getting into some of the good news and what we're doing in Lorain County about this issue. Um, federal grants are wonderful because it's not going to be like local Lorain County taxpayer money. This is as far as like county taxes or income tax or anything like that. This is going to be um, federal sources made possible through different um, uh, laws and bills. So um, we have really started ramping up our efforts. I, I lead the team at the health department that does a lot of the, as I said, the safety and the chronic disease prevention work. Um, so we've really began looking for grants at the state and federal level about mm, five to eight years ago. And we've really been able to ramp up the amount of funding that we're bringing in to address this issue in Lorain County. And I'm so excited that we've been able to um, receive a what they're calling a safe streets and roads for all planning grant um, this is a new brand new program created by the bipartisan infrastructure law at the federal government through the um, federal highway administration and um, basically it's just getting at kind of what i was just saying that these roadway fatalities and serious injuries are in fact preventable um, so yes, we were, we were awarded around 160000 in 2023 to do a planning process. And once you have that required plan for Safe Streets for All, we've shortened it to Safe Streets for All, um, it opens the floodgates for even more federal funding for implementation work. Everything from uh, construction and roadway changes to policy work, um, more staffing that are able to work on this issue. So we're really excited that we've been able to start this process. Um, and so everything is hinging around, as I've said, kind of like the, there is a way to eliminate fatalities and serious injuries on, and then that's the goal. It's called Vision Zero or the Safe System Approach. Um, I have a couple notes here so I don't mess it up. So um, basically the framework recognized, as I said, humans make mistakes, but there are strategies that we can do to accommodate those mistakes. Um, this framework also recognizes that human bodies can only take so much impact so, and survive. So again, kind of focusing on the most vulnerable road users or sidewalk users, um, pedestrians and bicyclists. Um, so there's six principle and five elements here, principles and five elements here. Safer vehicles, you know, doing what we can to just ensure that the vehicles themselves are safe and the operators are having safe behaviors. Safer speeds is a big thing. So even looking at speed limit changes or, you know, analyzing some of that work um, throughout different roadways. Safer roads themselves, so engineering uh, changes, physical changes, separated bike lanes instead of on street, you know, ensuring that there's sidewalk and walkable areas, things like that. Um, Post-crash care is a really interesting one. So when a crash does occur, the, the pace and the speed and the efficiency of getting to that site of a serious crash and then being able to um, take the action that's needed again to hopefully reduce the likelihood of a death as a result of that crash. Um, so there's some policy and different funding and work that we could do in that piece. And then, um, of course, safer people. I think I kind of touched on that. But just safer behaviors, education. Again, you can't just have any one strategy. It's very layered to hopefully curb this issue. All right, so as I said, we are working on a safety action plan. And the big kind of, it packs the punch because once you get this required plan done, um, it's billions of dollars available to uh, local communities to bring in to actually address some of this the, of these issues. Um, so Lorain County, we're really proud. We've been able to coordinate. Lorain County Public Health is the health department has coordinated representation from all over the county. We have representation and touch points with every community. Um, the county engineering office is responsible for all the townships in the county. And then we do have partners like Avon Lake leaders um, at the table for your community here and as I said every community in the county so it's awesome to see everyone working together we meet once a month and we've just been working on this plan to analyze data and then make recommendations that we think can actually work um, so I'll move on and I'm talking a lot there will be a little bit more time for dialogue here Harold. I'm about 15 minutes in um, but I'll just share briefly so what we're starting to find in this planning process is um, 
you know, just looking at those existing conditions. So as you can see from 2014 to 2023, over 50,000 crashes. And again, we're not thinking we're going to eliminate crashes, but looking at those that were fatal, 207, and then looking at those that had serious injuries, about 1,300. Um, so that's about 1,500 what we call FSI, fatal or serious injury crashes, um, that we're hoping to get down to zero. And it is possible. Um, and we're excited that we have already a lot of funding that we're bringing in to help to get to that point. Um, and then this is really interesting. So I'm actually going to be sharing now. I'm getting into a bit about the um, data that this planning process has found so far. So um, we have a professional consultant that is working, helping to do this, you know, um, very technical analysis. And what they found is that um, urban areas have a higher rate of um, crashes, of, and especially those uh, fatal and serious injury crashes compared to the rural areas. So you can see um, they're considering urban uh, all of the gold. So that would include Avon Lake as considered a more urban area as opposed to rural. Now we did point out obviously there's suburban and just kind of like kind of mixed type community types, but um, in general this is what the definition would be for the plan. All right, and as I said, um, just getting into some data here, and uh, we're seeing, as I've said, we're seeing um, more urban crash locations, but then in general, most crashes occur at intersections and at mid-block crossings. So especially when like you can kind of imagine if there's not a safe crossing and there's a long stretch of roadway without a safe crossing, that's often a times where a pedestrian might jut out or you know someone is trying to cross, and so, naturally that is going to be a higher location when there's not safe crossings um, at the mid block. I'm not sure how well you can see this, but this just gets into like real data from again 2014 to 2013 as to um, like the nature of these crashes. Like fixed object means as it sounds, so um, you know hitting something that's stagnant there. Um, angle, I believe, you know, I, I'm not going to give you the best, like most wonderful definitions of these, but they're all pretty self-explanatory. Um, and then I believe we also have a stat on um, factors. So these are getting into what you all are probably thinking, like, well, how much of these would have a substance to do with them? For example, like alcohol or drug use, um, speeding. So you can kind of see, you know, that is significant, definitely alcohol use uh, in urban areas representing, you know, just under 250 of the crashes. Um, but the number one most common is a roadway departure. So that could be anything from falling asleep at the wheel or just, you know, distracted driving, things like that. Um, it also would apply to, um, yeah, it's mostly vehicles here, but it could apply to like bike crashes. If, if like a bicycle, we haven't had any, but say if, if a bicyclist were to veer off um, in their lane or um, on their trail. So keep going. All right, and then just a couple more, I, as I mentioned, as I promised, some um, Lorraine County specific stats. Um, unfortunately, since 2018, we've seen in Lorain County 131 fatalities. So you remembered that other stat that I gave you. Um, it was much longer time frame. Um, just since 2018, we've seen 131. Now in 2024, unfortunately, we're up to um, 15. 15 this year, Lorain County residents, Ohio residents, people in our community that have died on Lorain County roadways. And these stars, as you can imagine, are different occurrences as to where they're happening.